Thursday, October 16th. I'm Joanne and this is Rocket Boom. Heavy metal superworms. These worms consume lead and copper and arsenic and other toxic metals that contaminate the soil like a festering black horde of brutal, filthy, death worm legions of doom, dark worminess. Then they excrete them out, making them easier for extraction. Expect to see these worms on tour at a toxic landfill near you. In other dark matters, a bacterium known as Desulfuridus or Daxviator was recently discovered hiding in total darkness without oxygen and in complete and utter isolation 1.74 miles beneath the surface of a gold mine near Johannesburg, South Africa. How sad. The bacteria is so alone that it has to derive its energy from the radioactive decay of uranium, crafting its own organic molecules from water, inorganic carbon and ammonia. Can you imagine being so lonely and abandoned and surrounded by nothing but your own endospores to keep you warm? I don't know what I'd do in such isolation. Makes me want to just smash something. Well, not smash my own stuff, but someone else's. At Sarah's Smash Shack in San Diego, patrons buy the right to hurl plates and glasses against a wall for a quick 15 minutes of cracking, cathartic expression. We should all be so lucky to find artistic expression for our emotions. I, for one, am training my sinuses to draw kittens. It's totally possible. Like 56-year-old Ru Anting of Luoyang, China, creates calligraphy by sucking up streams of water through his nose and spraying it out through his tear ducts. That's some serious plumbing gone wrong. In other stories of things that ought to be where they're not, even though it seems as if they should be, the Antarctic ice fish in the Southern Ocean doesn't produce red blood cells because the freezing water is rich in oxygen and as a result has a lightweight skeleton with low mineral density. The National Science Foundation is studying the fish in an effort to develop treatments for osteoporosis and anemia in humans. The ice fish could soon begin to suffer the effects of rising sea temperatures, so scientists are pressed to hurry the study along. Runaway cacti tracked using microchips. The Arizona National Park Service is planning on implanting tracking devices into the state's coveted saguaro cacti. Known for sprouting arms around age 70, many saguaros have been suspected of sprouting legs, or more likely just being stolen, as many have gone missing at alarmingly high rates. With the new microchip, park rangers hope to better track the missing plants. I wonder what the National Association for the Protection of Saguaro Cacti will have to say about this. No doubt they'll be up in arms. And finally, in legs, an adhesive tape inspired by the complex sticky foot pads of geckos has been grown in a lab from carbon nanotubes. The tape uses a dry system of branching tubes and is 10 times as adhesive as the lizard's own toes. In other words, sticky.